There is obviously uncertainty in the industry today. There are those who are hesitant to market, invest in their business, and push the envelope for new success. S5 obviously doesn't hold back. If you could point to three things that a business leader needs to succeed to overcome the uncertainty and anxiety, what would they be? Well, one thing, John, is to learn everything you can. I never had, you know, I, I went to college for all of one semester. I studied uh, bull riding, rodeo team, and uh, campus wildlife. And I was invited to straighten up or leave, so I did the logical thing, I left. But I have never stopped learning. I have seized every opportunity that I'm able to to learn more about what I'm doing, what, whatever it is. And through affiliation with um, industry trade groups, I've been fortunate enough to come into contact with people who could teach me what I didn't know. And people love to talk about what they do, you know, and so if, if I'm with a sealant chemist, well, there are things I want to know about sealants, you know, teach me, and that guy will he'll go on forever, you know, and the same thing with a steel producer. And so I asked, I've always asked a lot of questions and learned everything that I could learn about what I'm doing. When you do that, you're able to manage your risk. You know, knowledge is power. And when you know more, you actually risk less. So any entrepreneur, as you know, has to take risk, but it's a matter of of educating yourself to minimize the risk so that there are fewer unknowns and then you're more comfortable taking risks. So that's certainly a big factor. Another one is hiring people smarter than you. You know, that intimidates some folks to have people on their staff who are smarter than they are, but those people will never grow into large enterprises unless they free themselves up and do that. And um, that was something that I learned kind of early on. And um, I've always tried to practice that, to hire someone who, who knew more than I did. And, you know, I've hired a, a, a marketing VP who knows more about, my, you know, the guy's a genius. He knows way more about marketing than I could ever know. I hired an ops manager because I told you, I don't do well with operations. I'm just not, I just don't have the patience for it. So know your strengths and weaknesses and hire people to fill the voids that your weakness would create without that person. And I've always tried to do that. And the third thing would be to hook up with God. I'm a pretty deeply committed Christian and I got hold of Christ or he got hold of me. I'm not sure exactly how that worked uh, when I was about 33 years old. And I'd tried to do everything on my own before that. And it didn't work out so well. But Jesus Christ is not only my savior, but he's my confidant, he's my mentor, he's my teacher, my counselor, and he's my business partner too. Every leader has their influences, something or someone they look to that inspires them or motivates them. Can you tell us about who influenced your start down the road of success? And today, is there someone or something that still inspires or motivates you? Well, I, I was raised, um, John, by a single mom and we couldn't afford much. So going way back, I had to work for everything that I had, you know, I think since I was about eight years old. Um, if I wanted a new bicycle, <laughs> I had to earn some money and get a new bicycle. My mom couldn't afford to give me a new bicycle. So, you know, as I, as I look back, that scenario, that environment was a gift, not a punishment. And I learned at a, at a very, very early age the important things about free enterprise. You know, I was out raking leaves or mowing lawns or collecting pop bottles for two cents a piece. I mean, I learned the value of money and I learned about free enterprise 
and I learned the importance of integrity and, and a work ethic, things that are getting harder and harder to find these days. But I would say that that was kind of a, th a thing fundamentally for me that enabled me to achieve some of the things later in, in life that I've achieved. Um, you asked, well, you know, was there part of your question, was, is there something that keeps me going or, or kind of re-motivates me? And I'd have to say that when my kids decided to join the company, that was like a breath of fresh air for me because the company was getting, first of all, it was getting too big. I couldn't manage it myself anymore. But they brought some new perspective and they brought some new life into the company. And um, that's so gratifying for me because I've, I've never really pushed my kids in any direction. I never brought them up thinking that, yeah, we have to follow in dad's footsteps and do what dad did. Uh, there was never any of that. They came to me kind of one at a time, first my oldest and then my youngest and then the middle one and wanted to be involved with, um, with S5 and with the family business. And so that was a really gratifying thing for me and it, and it really kind of took on a new dimension when my kids got involved with the business. Rob, thank you for giving the opportunity for us to get this in-depth view of S5. We know your time is valuable, uh, but it was a pleasure nonetheless. Thank you. John, it's been a pleasure. It's all mine. I'm glad you took time to come out in the middle of this Rocky Mountain springtime blustery weather. And you're welcome back anytime. We'll have to do it again.